Happy Halloween, everybody. Well, a few days early anyway. I'm Jason, the creator of the Tabletop Battlefield, and I thought today we would work on a little bit of a Halloween-themed terrain project. So I picked up this little guy here. It's a just a skeleton dragon I bought from the grocery store. I think I paid about $8 for it. Nothing too fancy. <laughs> But conveniently, it's about the right size, in the right size range anyway, for a 28 millimeter um, miniature gaming board. So I thought it'd be really kind of cool to take this thing, break it apart, and turn it into a little fossilized terrain piece. It kind of looks like it's you know, a fossilized dragon embedded in your terrain. So let's work on that today. So other than the dragon or whatever skeleton you want to use, they do sell other types of skeletons. I just picked the dragon because it looked cool. Um, I'm also going to be using some Sculpey to make the actual base here. So this is just oven dry clay or oven bay clay. You can get this from Arts and Crafts stores. It's about like 2 or $3 for a little bundle like this. And then whatever you want to base things with. So I've got some flocking sitting over here as well as who knows what I'll find later on. But first, I want to decide what pieces I want to use for the fossil. So I do got to mangle this guy. You know, he's really adorable. But, but the good thing is, you know, after, about after Halloween, I can probably get another one for half off. Save all those parts for next year. I'll do something cool with them later. But I've got enough right now to work on in terms of making a fossil piece. So I'm just kind of lay things out how I think it might be kind of cool to see. You can have like, I don't know, a jawbone like that. It's the rare, the very rare dragon who has the mad bones magically inscribed made in China on them. So we'll put that part down. <laughs> Maybe that'll be sticking up. Let me, um, I don't have a lot of Sculpey, so let me cut back these, um, the wing bones a bit. So we'll do something like that, 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 that. And maybe put like one or two of these. When it comes to like dinosaur bones, it's actually, I think, almost unheard of if not unheard of to find a complete skeleton so having just like a single terrain piece like this that just seemingly arbitrary mishmash parts of the creature is actually kind of reasonable all right so now that i got an idea as to what i'm thinking what i will do let me start mashing together some sculpey and create a basic shape for the terrain piece now i intentionally picked some like a dark brown a light brown and yellow just kind of get some quite earth tones I don't got to do a lot of painting of the base terrain piece. What I am doing is kind of breaking off just little pieces of it and spreading it around. And then I'm going to kind of mix them all together to get a more of a kind of toned surface instead of just having like, you know, a solid color across most of it. And if you're wondering why the ground would be yellow, well, you got a dragon here. So don't worry about it. What you want to do is build a base. You're going to put the pieces into that base. You don't want to initially integrate them into the sculpey. Because you're going to have to take the plastic pieces out to actually, you know, harden the sculpey. You don't want to be melting this plastic. <laughs> All right, everybody. Future Jason here. I've got a bit of an important point to make because I need to call out a common but potentially serious mistake that I made here. And it's important not to do this in order to prevent fire. <laughs> That's awesome. This is what happens. You have like a couple hours a week to make a YouTube video. You rush through certain things and make mistakes. But in a moment here, I'm going to be using wax paper as a nonstick surface for molding my terrain piece. Now that's fine at this phase because wax paper works pretty well for this process. However, wax paper is not heat safe. So when you get to the part where we're using the heat gun to heat up the wax paper, or not heat the wax paper, when you get to the point where we're using the heat gun to heat up the clay, you don't want to be using wax paper at this point because potentially you could start a fire if you're not careful. Um, in fact, when I was doing this process, it did smoke a little bit and that's probably the wax paper heating up a little bit too much. But with that very important disclaimer out of the way, let's get back to the build. 
So what I'm doing now is I'm tapering the edges. So I'm making the outside parts of the terrain piece almost flat with the wax paper so they kind of slope up towards the highest point, which of course is going to be the middle of the terrain piece. Okay, let's start putting in the bones. Now carefully, one at a time, remove the bone pieces. We have to harden the scalpy, and of course, like I said, we don't want the plastic in there during that process. The thing to keep in mind here, Sculpey is designed to be an oven baked clay, but with terrain pieces like this, you can run into problems where you may almost burn things down, like I, your house, apartment, etc. Uh, the problem you run into is because of the fact the edges are all tapered, the edges here would cook a lot faster and harden a lot faster on the inside, and then they're going to start to burn. So, an alternative option to hardening Sculpey that can work pretty well is using a heat gun. I'm not really too worried about the inside being hardened. It just needs to be strong enough such that you can go ahead, paint it a little bit, put some coating on and flock it, all that stuff. So I'm going to take my heat gun, I'm going to put this down on an old cooking tray that I don't use for food anymore, and just blast it with the heat gun until the top of it's pretty well solid. This can go very fast from kind of being nice and normal to start emitting smoke, so be careful. <laughs> the one time when I did this in the oven, with these little thin edges, basically smoke was just pouring out of the oven. So that's why I do it this way now. I, I, it seems to work. So most of it is hard. At least most of the surface is reasonably hard. Some of it's cooked really well. Some of it's still a little soft, but I think it'll be all right for what we're trying to do. One piece at a time, we're going to put things back to, in place. But what I do want to find is some super glue and glue each of these pieces down. The thing about fossils is fossils aren't actually bone. They were originally bones that eventually, for a long story short, turned into rocks. I've actually got a handful of fossils here. These are a couple of trilobites. You, oh, that's holding them actually up to the camera. They're a darkish gray, almost black color, and this is a dinosaur bone. Or so the label says. It does look like just like a rock, but apparently this is a dinosaur bone. <laughs> I bought this one from the local science museum, so I'm hoping they're not screwing me over, but you never know. But the point is, they do look basically like rocks, whereas this looks like, an, you know, kind of a somewhat worn bone. So I'm going to play around with some different colors, do some washing, and just see what comes out in the end. So the first coat I'm experimenting with, this is just Dawnstone Gray from Games Workshop Citadel line of paints. And I think I just got some super glue on my dry brush. So the moral of the story, it's probably not a bad idea to wait for the super glue to completely dry before trying to paint things. So our next step is going to load up on the Seraphim Sepia and just cover the bones in this shade from Games Workshop Citadel's line of paints. And finally, before even letting the previous shade dry, I'm going to hit this with some non-oil from Games Workshop Citadel line of paints. I actually like how that looks. They have that kind of dark, little bit brownish gray look that a lot of fossils have. I like it. It looks pretty cool. Now it's time to start applying some of the terrain flocking. Now, not all the wash is dry, but that's fine. If a little bit of flocking gets in the bones, that's cool. It just kind of adds to the element of the fact they're... They've been slowly emerging over the past few thousand years, but they're not quite out yet, so there's still some grass and moss growing on them. For this, I've just got some standard white glue, so PVA glue of some sort. And I'm going to just spread it around a little bit at a time and apply very carefully apply the flocking to where I want it. What I'm going to start with is this ballast-like material, and I'm going to put that around the bones. This kid here also has a um, some larger rock things to it, so I'm going to use that. And I guess what you're wondering, <laughs> I'm pulling these random items out of here, this is the um, Army Painter 
Battlefield Basing Set. It's got a handful of bits of little different flocking in here. Um, it's a lot of different stuff. I mean, it's not a lot of anything in particular, so I don't know how good of a deal it really is. But you just want a sampling of what they have to offer and try stuff out. I guess it's great for that. <laughs> but just applying a little bit of super glue down and sticking them in place. Then it's time to apply some Woodland Scenics flocking. So we're going back to the PVA glue, applying that in some of the areas. And then I'm going to be putting down two different colors of turf. In fact, one's a blended turf. So we're going to do quite a variety of colors of the Woodland Scenics. And feel free to kind of pull back the flocking a little bit if it's covering up the bones too much. Because you do want them to be visible. They're kind of the showcase piece of this terrain set here. The last bit of training I'm going to put on here are these little tufts of grass that are included in the kit. I think they're self-adhesive. I think. Let's find out. Yeah. So I'm just going to put maybe four or five of these down just to get a little bit more variety going. If you have any areas of flocking that you kind of missed, <laughs> Might not be a bad idea to stick some of these in those places. So you know what? I think I'm going to call this piece done. I let it dry overnight. And then you can seal it using whatever method you prefer. There's some different ways of sealing flock terrain out there. Just look up on YouTube, see what you can come up with. Um, but for me, this tutorial is going to be done. And also... I think it's time to call this dry brush a bit done. <laughs> time to go to the store and buy a new army painted dry brush because I totally abused this thing tonight. But anyway, thank you guys all for watching. Once again, I hit my microphone. Once again, I'm Jason, the creator of the Tabletop Battlefield. Happy Halloween, everybody. So go ahead and hit subscribe here to see more random terrain tutorials for tabletop wargaming, robotics, which, oh, uh, like micro flashes. I don't, I don't know. I always do that. I, you, know, you, know, you know my gimmick. Um, and other things like that. So until next week, have a great week. I don't know why I'm rain froze there. I'm like, well, how do I want to end the video? Have a great week is a good way to do it, guys. Have a great week. <laughs> and of course, for like the third or fourth time, happy Halloween.